Hello. Hi. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Alexandra. How is everybody? We'd like for people to like. Yeah. Are you scratching at my chair? Cats. Cats and their shenanigans. Hello, hello. I feel like I haven't done a YouTube live in a hot minute. I felt like chatting about stuff. I put stuff in the title that I'd be down to talk about that I've been thinking about, but it's like any other live where it's like, just ask me stuff and we can chat about whatever. I am down for that. I have a little bit of an echo, probably because I'm in a room that's really echoey. Is it like actually in my, um, if it sounds like a normal echo, the room is echoey. So it might be that. Um, I don't know if it's actually the AirPods. Marco, hello. Elizabeth, hello. If anyone else is having audio issues, let me know. But it said everything was fine before. It's like feedback. Anyone else hear that? Sounds normal to me. Yeah. Alexandra, it might be something on your end, possibly. Because usually the AirPods don't. How's the new place treating you? It's good. It's basically like 90% good. Um, it's gotten to a, like I have most of the art up. Well, I have all the art up. I have a few things that need to get framed that I got recently. Um, and what else? There's like a few little like furniture things that I need, but like nothing that's preventing this place from being like comfortable and livable and um, basically good. Yeah, definitely an echoey room. One of the things I wanna do this weekend, I'm actually like trying not to be social this weekend, like at all, because for the last like six weeks, I've done something social with other people, like, basically every day, every weekend. It's like three days a week and it's too much. Um, oh yeah, the video up on Twitter on YouTube. I was wondering if you had it open in two windows. I was like, that sounds like that. Um, yeah, so I haven't had time for just like myself besides after work on weekdays and that never quite feels like your own time anyway. Um, so this weekend I'm planning on doing just like errands type stuff and just like chill stuff. Uh, and I need to get a rug for this room because I'm hoping that really improves the audio thing. The problem is, is like the ceilings are really high so I don't know how much is actually going to improve the echo because uh, I have stuff on the walls. I have the books, I have the desk, I'm gonna put something on the wall here, but I have art on most of the walls. I have that tapestry on the wall behind me, this guy. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad, and it still is, and I'm not really sure how much uh, our rug's gonna help, but I think it'll help a little bit. So, um, I'm making bread pudding right now, really yummy, exciting. Yeah, I, um, the social burnout, is definitely a thing for me right now especially because you know over the winter even um but for the last couple of years it's been like maybe i did something social when it was safe to do so like once a week and then now that spring has hit chicago just like explodes and there's a ton of stuff to do and people just want to do stuff and enjoy the weather and whatever so it's been doing a lot of stuff which is nice but it's also like oh, i just need like a recharge weekend. So I'm hoping, like I said, to get a rug. I'm probably gonna go to like Trader Joe's, get groceries, possibly the farmer's market. Um, and getting some stuff from like Home Depot to finish up my plant, Ikea greenhouse that I've had for well over a year now. Um, but I need to still like insulate that better. I need to just finish that up. Um, I think that's like majorly it. Uh, maybe film just like a ton of content. I already have some stuff filmed from this week actually. Uh, do a lot of reading. It's kind of like I feel like doing, doing some witch stuff. Um, it'll probably honestly fly by. I am seeing my boss tomorrow. She's not even really my boss. Um, but she like manages our group. Um, and so I'm going to see her, but that's because I'm going over to her house and our dogs are having a play date. <laughs> so like that's the only really social thing I plan on doing this weekend, which I think will be nice because I've just had a lot of socialization. And I'm just tired. So I am currently reading The Witch's Heart by Genevieve. 
I don't know how to say her last name because I don't know if I've ever heard it said, but The Witch's Heart. Um, that is our Patreon book club for uh, this quarter. So this is the last month for it. We do on Discord like a, a every quarter read along thing. Um, they pick the book and then we do a read along. Um, and this is the one for spring and then we'll be voting middle to end of this month for the one for summer. So we'll see what that ends up being. But we're doing a fun little like buddy read thing. Haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah, so far so good. Um, it's kind of what I pictured where I kind of wanted it to be like a little bit in the style of like Circe by Madeline Miller, but with like Norse mythology. And so far, kind of the vibe. Um, I'm liking it uh, so far. I think I got it this year for Christmas. So I've been mean to read it. <laughs> I've been very excited to read it. And then I'm doing a little thing if you follow me on Instagram. Um, so I'm having people pick up some books and we'll see what that amounts to. But yeah. I'm excited. So I'm gonna attempt attempt a thing. Attempt a thing. I've heard of things about that one. Currently we're in the star of thief. Uh, how are you feeling about that? Because I've been hearing some mixed reviews about that book, about people kind of being like, it's fine. Um, so people aren't loving that quite as much as I was hoping they honestly would. Um, yeah. So I'm curious because it does sound like something that I would enjoy. I'm going to read it. I just um, you know, be seeing sort of mixed opinions about it. I'm drinking a lot of water right now because I barely drink any water like all day, and I'm very thirsty. But yeah. So I asked on Twitter um, yesterday, I think, how people find new booktube channels, and not new as in like the booktubers are new, like new to you booktube channels. And a lot of people responded that they like look up reviews of books that they like to try to find people, which I have not had a ton of success with. Um, and then someone responded um, that they look up TBR games and find people based on that like trend of people creating TBR games. Are y'all aware of this TBR game situation? Because I only knew, who do I follow? Someone I follow does like a TBR Monopoly. And I always forget to watch the video. I barely am watching book two videos. I've been doing it a little bit more last couple of days. Uh, I have a cat, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's, um, there's, there's so many. Oh, I saw her. There's so many that like, people have created to pick their TBR. Like I'm an OG who people used to have TBR jars. They used to be a thing, right? You pick something out of the TBR. Now people have like, oh, oh there's also the wheel of TBR that I've seen someone do. I don't know who all do, is doing it. I can't give credit because I don't know like who all does it. I've seen a Monopoly. I've seen so a Monopoly board. I've seen a wheel of TBR. I've seen uh, like card decks. I've seen like an RPG TBR. Okay, I haven't even seen G's TBR thing. Okay, Jenga. I was not aware of this being a phenomenon. Um, so I'm gonna try to find some people through that potentially, maybe. Um, I think Becca, from, is Becca the one that did the wheel? I kind of, I kind of feel like, Right, the TBR jars do bring back memories. People still do them, but now it's like these elaborate games. Um, and part of me was like, you should do a TBR game. And then I'm like, no, because I am not, oh, she does the book Opoly. Okay, I knew she did something that like I've seen. Um, yeah, part of me is like, you should do it because that like sounds fun. But then, and just like creative content, honestly. But then I was like, no. <laughs> because I'm doing so good this year about reading books that I'm like loving, right? And the thing is, is my TBR, most of the books in my TBR, I am like looking forward to and things that I like. So I'm probably being a little overly cautious, but I'm also like, I don't want anything to pick for me. But I am getting to the point, like I'm getting down to probably around 30 or 40 books in my TBR. 
and all of them are things that I'm like pretty genuinely interested in. Um, I mean, they all are. Like all of the books are books I'm interested in because that's what I did to like cull down my TBR. Um, so I could I could do that. So I, I actually have an idea, not for a TBR game that's necessarily monthly, but to do something similar-ish using witchy things. <laughs> so look forward to that. I don't know when that's going to happen. It's not going to be this month because I have something else planned for this month. Yeah, there are TBR games. I didn't even know. If you literally look up TBR game, just search TBR game, and a bunch of them will come up. Oh my god, I also miss Chelsea so much. So that's part, okay, so that actually leads into like what like the reason I've been really for the last like two years, I've been trying to find new booktube channels. Like, um, again, new to me, like not necessarily people that are new to making booktube content. And it's like so hard to do. And people are like, oh, you look in the recommends or whatever. And I'm like, my recommends never shows me anything. And honestly, I probably have a harder time now because I watch so much different kinds of content on YouTube that like my recommends will sometimes skew into a different interest. And so I won't be getting a lot of booktube content. So maybe I should try to like watch the other kind of content on like a different channel. I don't know. Um, so I don't really get the recommends that much. I don't follow. So most of the people that I follow um, is that they're gone. They don't, they don't make content anymore. Like Chelsea... Chelsea, I credit with like getting me into romance books. I don't really read romance books that much anymore right now because they made me so sloppy last year. But like Chelsea. Um, so many of the booktube SFF creators, like the people that were really only reading sci-fi and fantasy are gone. Um, very few people are still around. There's like a handful, but so many people that were like really actively involved in like the booktube SFF space are gone, um, not making content. Um, and there's people that like read, what I've noticed in channels that I've been trying to find other channels is there's people that will read SFF, but it's not the only thing they read, which is fine, but I am such a predominantly SFF reader that like, I don't, I don't want to see the other things. Like I don't, uh, the only person who I watch who does read like a wide variety, well, besides Muddy, uh, my name is Muddy Ness, um, is, uh, what, why did I just forget her name? Looks like, whoa, what? Oh, hello. Mara. Okay, it, like, it took me a second. Um, but she reads, like, nonfiction and SFF and a lot of mysteries and whatever. And so, like, all the books that she's talking about, I'm like, I'm not going to read this. You know? Um, are they moving to other platforms? Not really. Most people are just, like, stopping. A lot of people, um, what I've noticed is a lot of the people that were the SFF booktubers predominantly that, that read like, um, primarily like adult SFF is what I'm generally looking for anyway. Um, I'm losing my train of thought because I had like such a long day. Uh, most of them are older, right? Like they're in their like late twenties, thirties, even into like their forties. So a lot of people I feel like had kids and then, like, understandably couldn't keep up with content, you know? So, yeah. I have watched Emily Fox. Haven't, like, I should probably watch more of her videos again. She gets recommended on my feed a number of times. The problem is, and I, I've mentioned this, I think I mentioned this on Twitch, potentially, or to someone else, um, that I'm trying to look for books that I don't already know about. And I think my problem is that, I have been I've, I've been on these streets <laughs> for so long that I know most of the big book like most of the big sci-fi fantasy books. So, for example, with her potentially, I've like probably watched one of her videos and been like, I already know about these because I'm reading them, right? Or like they're already on my TBR, so like I don't even know anymore, you know? And maybe it might just be like that. Like I just I'm gonna know eighty percent of what's out there because. I am involved. I don't know. I'm the same I exclusively read. Yeah, and discuss fantasy. Right. Like I just want to read like the SFF books. So Rachel from Kalanati, um, I do watch. Um, I don't know if I'm Angela Literature Science. Where's my phone? Literature. So Patrick has been recommended to me a number of times. I should probably give his channel another go. I have a hard time. This is not against him. 
But y'all know I'm primarily misandrist. <laughs> and so any man, I'm just like, no. <laughs> but like it's it's not him um i should watch his stuff i should i should remember he's literally like on like he's number three on my search um uh, because i watch content so uh infrequently literature science alliance oh okay 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 let's see let's see let's see cool okay i will just save some people Emily reads a lot of backlinks too. Yeah, okay. I need to remember to like watch Emily. Um, should I send more books? No, because I don't trust you, actually. Um, Brie is asking if she should send more books and she sent me Midnight Sun twice. So, no. <laughs> I need to pick for myself. Covers with Cassidy. Oh my gosh, there's so many, hold on. Um, okay, I already watched Made Between the Pages. Kristen is full of books. See, if I search these, hopefully they'll stay in my search. Uh, Kristen. These people read adult SFF. I've never seen this person. Awesome. Okay, so we have. Okay, 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 promising. Cool, okay, and then. Covers with Cassidy. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh, okay. Reacting to SBFBO. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. And then Julie. See, like, how would I have found these people? I don't know if that's actually. Yeah, like, how do you even find people? Oh my god, okay. Okay. Cool. Did I get everybody? Mindy's book journey, mostly horse. See, horse and freaking out. Um, Dom, Dominish books. Hopefully all these are going to save. I'll just have to come back and watch. Watch this again, if not. I don't know, a man. <laughs> no, it's okay. Sometimes I watch videos by men. Sometimes. Um, do you plan to read the new Holly Black book? <clears throat> yes. Um, it's the Hubs Up Book Club thing for this month. So we will be reading it and talking about it. That is uh, the list. Oh, wait, The Naughty Librarian. Is The Naughty Librarian reading Dark Romance? Because that sounds like Dark Romance. The Naughty Librarian. Oh. Smutty books. And then... Okay, this should be helpful. Hopefully I find some people through you guys telling me stuff. I'm trying to find new birds and new tours. I have some of those same taste I like in books. Yeah, that's hard. Ooh, what are like different tastes from Liam's Liam's library? These all better save. Okay, okay. Promising. Okay. I also watch Murphy here and there. I should probably watch her videos more often. I just need to get back on like YouTube. I mean, not, I don't need to do anything, but I find that I trust YouTube recommendations more than like TikTok ones, just based on like how where the creator base tends to be in their reading journeys. I'm finding because TikTok is like a newer platform that there tends to be, and this is this is a generalization, obviously I'm on there and I've been reading for a very long time, whatever, but there tends to be a lot of people that are like returning to the to reading, to the hobby. And so um, standards are different. 
you know, like the way that I was when I first joined BookTube and like liked most things I was reading because everything was like new and fun and interesting. Now it's like, okay, yeah, like I don't rate things the same as when I first started, you know, so it's nothing against those people. It's just like, I need a different scale of like, critique, I guess. Um, and I'm also trying to retrain my brain to watch long form content again. <laughs> because I have been just sucked into the short form content. Yes. And TikTok does have a lot of like two recs from 10 years ago. There are some new recs. Yes. And there are people I trust on both talk as well. Um, a hundred percent, but it's, and it's a similar thing where like, I need to find people that have similar tastes in books to me. And then I'm like, okay, but like a general for you page, like here's this new book. No, no, <laughs> I can't trust it. I can't trust it. I just can't. Yeah, talk about a lot of the same books in the general sphere of things. The books that get people back into reading, like it, it makes sense. Yeah, um, Zodiac Academy. It's so funny because I was gonna potentially try out Zodiac Academy and then I've had like booktubers or other like book talkers that I trust be like, this is actual garbage. <laughs> like, like that it's like literally horribly written. Like it's not even just like, oh, if you don't like certain tropes, you're not gonna like it. It's like, no, like it's it's actually bad. And that's not even just Mari, because Mari and I don't agree on everything, obviously. Um, and sometimes I have a lower standard for some like I can I can engage with trash to a higher extent than I feel like sometimes she can. Uh, and that's just like differences in, in uh, being able to deal with stuff, I don't know. So I was like, okay, like she might not like it, but I like, I again, I can read Sarah Jamas books and not like completely tear them apart from like a uh, reading quality standpoint. But this sounds, sounds really bad. Yeah. Bro, that is a B tier Y book, yeah. Um, truly wild. The, the the TikTok fascination with Spice Two is also odd to me. Like what you like, but it's also like, is everything has to have a Spice rating? Like, wow. Yeah, exactly. I cheered up a Crescent City. Mari would never. <laughs> you know, like I can I can you know let go to a certain extent of like my critical mind and just be like, this is cotton candy and that's what I'm doing, you know? But that's me. <laughs> yeah, if it was one person, yes. But like, yeah, it's, it's definitely been a ton of people have been like, this is hot garbage. So it took me years to find booktubers whose taste I gelled with. I don't have the patience to do it with TikTok. That's valid. Although I will say for all of TikTok's faults, and every platform has its faults. The algorithm is so good that it will introduce you to people that generally speaking do have your taste. Um, especially if you're not engaging with content. Like sometimes I will get more Sarah J Mouse content that I want because I will engage with like certain pieces of that fandom that I like. Like if someone makes like a funny Akatar meme or someone like when they were all doing the Rune Dannon sound, I like thought that was hilarious and so I was engaging with that content more and now it's showing me like all the Sarah Jamas and I'm like no but generally speaking if you're engaging with for example like I try to really only like book content that is aligned with my taste right um although it still sometimes will show me like spicy dark romance recommendations and I'm like friend I never engage with this but they're like but you're on book talk but generally speaking, it will show me stuff where YouTube, it's much harder to find just recommendations using either like the recommended tab or like trying to search for people. Like it's, YouTube's an incredibly hard platform to find new people on. And that's why it's harder to grow there than it is for like say on TikTok. To be fair, you were the only reviewer that most of the books you recommend right in my alley. Thank you. Glad we have good taste. Yeah, sometimes we do need our cotton candy. I always find it hilarious people ask for the spice rating for like a political fantasy, right? Like people, and people don't know, but it's also like, is there romance in this? And it's just like, I understand wanting to read romance, but like there's entire genres of like fantasy romance. Like if I'm talking about 
the Poppy War. Like the fact that people, <laughs> there were people on Book Talk recommending the Poppy War for like the romance. And I'm like, y'all don't read the Poppy War if you think you're reading the romance. <laughs> that's a horrible idea. Like what? So yeah, that's not every, it, it can be a little bit annoying to me as like somebody who just generally likes the genre. And I like romance too, obviously. But someone who generally just likes SFF books to always be like, but is a romance in it? Be like, there's not there. It's it's good whether it has romance in it or not. Like I get you wanting to read what you want to read, but like take a break from the fantasy romance for like a second. Um, so yeah, again, TikTok has its issues, but there's also a lot of really good creators out there. Yeah, that is setting up for failure. Yeah, the, the people that, frankly, there's been a little bit of pushback on the Poppy War thing where people are like, the Poppy War is not a romance. The Poppy War barely even has, has a romantic subplot. The Poppy War is more like alluded to. Do not read it for a romance. Absolutely not. Like, it's not even, like, I'm trying to think of a book that is actually sci fi fantasy and not like a fantasy romance where I would recommend it for the romance. Or, like, it has a good romantic subplot. Maybe, like, Uprooted. Um, and that's, like, it. Maybe Gideon the Ninth with, with caveats, because that's also very subtle. Um, that's, like, it. <laughs> uh, there are very few, like... There will be some like decent. Oh, um, Empire of Sands, The Winter of the Wish, Prior of the Orange Tree a little bit, you know. What I found is search and watch a bunch of the booktube newbie tags and then follow the ones that focus on SF. Valid. I am more so looking for. I don't always necessarily go for like an actual booktube newbie because I feel like it does take people a little bit of time to hit their stride, and so like I because. I've been making content for so long. Like, it's harder for me to watch people that are slightly awkward. It's just, I've been doing it a long time. Um, so I would rather find a channel that is new to me, but that's been doing it for a while, than like a booktube newbie. Although I guess you could say like the booktube movie tags have been around for so long that you would then find people who've been making content for a while at this point. But if I am introduced to them through their newbie tag, I might see them when they're being super awkward. You know? So. Remnant Chronicles does kind of, yes. Remnant Chronicles definitely is. So Remnant Chronicles, since it's YA, most of the YA fantasies do have a romance subplot. So I was looking at my adult books. Um, so most of, I mean, most of the YA, you know, Witchlands, Grisha, um, Remnant Chronicles, Winner's Trilogy, like all of those are going to have romance in them because they're YA. But typically speaking, like an adult fantasy book is going to be lower on the romance subplot. Yeah, A Brutal for Romance and maybe David Bod. But even David Bod is like, you don't really get to like see people together, right? Um, I mean, not that you really do with A Brutal either. But I feel like recommending somebody something for the romance like David Bod, that's such a long series, would be like setting up for failure. Winter of the Witch Spice rating. I mean, I know that you're joking, but if I was to give Winter of the Witch a Spice rating, it would still be, like, low. But, like, tension rating is, like, five peppers. <laughs> so good. Is Booktop trying to make new adult a thing? Yes. Um, they, they, I don't see as much new adult stuff. For a while there, I was seeing a lot of new adult stuff. Um because they recommend way more like indie and self-published people and that tends to be a very like indie and self-published genre. I see more just like dark romance in general though um, that I even see just like new adult. Like I, I just end up seeing like adult dark romance. For me, romance is nice to have an SFF and I love it when it's good with most of my favorite SFF I love for different reasons. That's how I feel. Like I also like a lot of my favorite SFF do have a good romance subplot to it but like that's not the main motivator for me so so most people have been doing it for a while just brings up a mixed and varied list of people who maybe new to you and yes sometimes it's offering yeah so it's kind of hard that's why i like getting recommendations like i wish there was like a sorry i have like a cat here sticking to my lipstick 
Um, I wish there was like a service where I could like type in someone's YouTube channel and then they show me a bunch of channels that are similar. Like I like it would definitely be like Ink Bones books. Like when Sonny used to make content, perfection, the perfect channel for me. Truly, I want more channels like hers. <laughs> like, um, who else? Like even like What Cast Red, Shay Adventure, Books and Pieces. I miss all these people. It makes me so sad. Yes, um, so adult fantasy tries to do romance, but it's the weakest aspect in my opinion. A hundred percent. Yes. Um, especially if it's a man. I don't know. Like, I mean, there's a few. Like, the, the romance in Elantris I kind of liked, but the romance in Mistborn I don't. Um, like, stuff like that. I know. Like, what cast was one of the people that, like, had a baby, I'm pretty sure I didn't like that. Pierre Ford, who still makes content here and there, but like had a baby, busy, you know? And I'm like, I'm selfish, I want your content back. But I feel like I'm one of the, the last booktube SFF people standing. It's like me and like Rachel and Thomas and like a few of those people. I can think of are all mostly and that's fine like I prefer mostly fantasy anyway but I like having a dabbling of sci-fi as a treat you know I'm reading a book written by a man right now in the first five pages her ample bra oh my god see thankfully most of the stuff that I do read is it doesn't have that right like when I eventually when I occasionally will read a man it's fine it's okay. The book is brilliant. I've also been very cautiously perusing Reddit, the fantasy Reddit, which is a mixed bag because I do feel like it's dominated by a lot of men, but you do see slightly different recommendations there, which is kind of nice. I do watch Holly Hart's books. I watch Holly mostly for like, she'll post about, um, well, I like her medieval a fun, and she'll post about like upcoming anticipated releases, which is kind of nice. So, and I watch, um, someone mentioned earlier, Elliot Brooks, things like that. Reddit isn't all bad. Reddit is what you make it. You know? But Reddit, like, I actually follow a number of things on Reddit that are, like, totally fine. Like, I follow, like, local, like, the Chicago Reddit, um, roller skating Reddit, a bunch of witchcraft subreddits, the fantasy subreddit. That's mostly it. I think. Tarot subreddit. Witchcraft. So, you have to, um, you have to curate your experience on Reddit, much like most social platforms. I watch Daniel Green, but mostly for fantasy news. His comments are a tad bro -y. I've talked about Daniel Green's content before. I'm not going to show you him in every live that I do, but I don't like the community that he cultivates. So <laughs> therefore, I don't tend to watch his content. Yes, I, exactly. That's how I'm on Reddit. I only go on like my homepage. I never go on like the front page or like any of that. Like I stick to my corners of Reddit and it's safe there, you know, and I will filter appropriately in like the fantasy subreddit. Like for example, a lot of the Malazan bros do hang on there um, and it can be insufferable but you can get other recommendations like when they're not just circle jerking about malazan then there's other people recommending other things which is nice i like reading he can be obnoxious yes <laughs> uh, yes 
Um, yeah, so maybe maybe part of it is, let me, I'll look at some of these new channels and see if I can find some new people. And I think a, a major part is that, generally speaking, I'm going to know the majority of what's out. Um, so, because, like, for example, I went to the bookstore the other day, and I recognize, like, 85% of the titles as either books that I've read, I know I'm not going to read, I know something about, I've heard about, like, in the, the whole bookstore. <laughs> like, granted, I wasn't at Barnes & Noble, I was at an indie bookstore, so it was slightly smaller, but still, like, I recognize most of the stuff. So it's, like, it's just the nature of being very, like, with it. I am trying to um, keep up a little bit with, like, not every new release, but... Um, I'm going to try to read all of the, well, this is also because I'm actually going to the Hugos, but I'm trying to read all the Hugo nominees for novel and novella, um, before the awards happen in September, although I don't even know when voting's going to be before then, so I gotta, like, hurry. But most of them, well, three of the novels I own, one of the novellas I've already read, um, and I think there's either five or six nominees in each category, I want to say. Um, I added them all like my spreadsheet yeah let me actually let me just tell you guys so you know what i'm planning on reading so yeah so it's like it's six i may or may not get to this the galaxy in the ground within by becky chambers this is the fourth book in the wayfarer series i already plan to read it light from the common stars by rika aoki have it on my shelf already going to read it she became the sun by shelly parker chan I already own it um, Project Hail Mary, Andy Weir, I've been hearing good things about it, A Master of Gin, Pete Jelly Clark, plan to read it, and then I don't know if I'm going to get to A Desolation Called Peace, because I have to read A Memory Called Empire, or A Memory, of whatever, I think it's A Memory Called Empire, first, and this is the second book, so I don't know if I'm going to get to that one, um, but I wanted to read all those anyway, so I'm like, why don't we try to read those before the awards, and then I already read A Psalm for the Wild Bill for novellas, by Becky Chambers. I have a spindle splinter. I saw Fireheart Tiger at the bookstore the other day and I was like, Ooh. and then Elder Race, which is I think by Adrian and then Across the Green Grass Fields by Shannon McGuire, which I'm really behind on the Wayward Children books, and that's the most recent one. Um, so hopefully I can get to that. It's kind of ambitious considering that like we'll probably have to start voting like next month or the month after. But I'm gonna try and make it happen. We'll see. I just wanna like Hugo voting's already open, well fuck. I went on there yesterday and it said like gonna be announced. Cause they were the voting for nominees has been open for a while, but they said the voting for like the um I literally looked at it last night. If it opened like today, I'm gonna to scream. Um, they said they hadn't yet announced the voting for final um, selections yet. I feel like that's more of a widespread booktube thing. Now you get to know a lot of the titles and find ones is harder. That's absolutely true. I follow a frolic through fiction. Yes, I follow her. I need to remember to actually watch those videos now. It seems like everyone's reading old stuff, so I'm afraid to review new stuff because they won't know what it is. That's funny. No, re review new stuff too. Um, I think the reason a lot of people are reviewing and reading older stuff these days is, I mean, I know that I feel this way a little bit. I've been reading much more backlist because I feel like 2021, I was very burned by a lot of like new releases. And again, I was mostly reading the romance. Um, but I was like, I need vetted shit. I need shit that I know is good, which is why like I plan on reading the Hugos because like, it's good if it was at least it is at least semi good if it was nominated for something like the Hugo's. Um, I tend to like take a look at the Goodreads Choice Awards. I wish there was a way. I, I tried to look at this the other day. I wish there was a way to kind of look at what books are sort of like trending Goodreads wise that might potentially end up on the awards at the end of the year before the end of the year because there's so many that like I would like to get a head start on those. Um, but there's like really no way to look at it. Like I went and looked at like what are the most read books in the fantasy, like, subgenre, like, this week or whatever, and it's a ton of stuff that's, like, a bunch of, like, indie stuff, like, indie fantasy romances that people are reading, and I'm, like, that's not what I'm looking for on the, like, I, I want 
I want you guys to show me what it's going to be at the end of the year, you know, that you're going to pull from. You have the stats. Give them to me. Ooh, indie bookstore newsletter might be a really good idea, actually. I've heard good things about the Goblin Emperor. I would say that that was underrated, but also has a niche following. And I do plan on reading it at some point. At some point. I, I mean, I don't own it. I just read Elder Race and really enjoyed it, which was a pleasant surprise because I had heard much about it. I haven't heard about anything about it. I've heard about that author before, but I haven't heard about that novella. How long do you think it will be streaming for? Um, no idea. <laughs> However long the conversation continues. I think it's only for a long time period before the package is already available. Really? I literally looked at the Hugo's yesterday. Hugo. And I'm a member, so... I should be knowing about this. Okay, and it literally says like it's now open. When did this open? And it has to be received by August 11th. The voter pack released. Eight days. Why wasn't I emailed? I'm so annoyed. Church. Okay, so I have till August 11th, which means I have like a little over a month and a half. No, two months. I have two months for like 11 books and I'm not even reading all those books this month. So will I make it? Probably not. Maybe I should rethink. <laughs> I was going to do that Instagram idea. I might, I might switch and have to like completely change my TBR to most of these picks for the next couple of months. I mean, I, I pay to be a member. I'm going to the Hugos this year. I need to actually be able to vote. <laughs> it's really fucking expensive. So. Library of Alan, Alexandria. Library. Another man. Okay. <sighs> okay. They're both Amazon owned, right? Both what? I know Goodread is. What are the other one you're talking about? Book of the Month seems to drive that Goodreads list. Oh. But for um Fantasy, not so much, because Book of the Month doesn't even always have fantasy releases and SFF releases in there. So I don't know what drives the SFF part of the Goodreads Choice Awards. I think probably the award winners, because I feel like a lot of the award winners were on last year's. I mean, I feel like generally speaking, a lot of award winners on the fantasy um, category. I checked their monthly new releases list. Those ones are just not on the awards. Okay. Also, any book of the month pick, famous book club pick, it's a fairly good shot to get on the list. But for the fantasy stuff, though. Thoughts on the Sword of Kaiga. I have not read that yet, but I do plan to. Again, there's like so many books that like I hear good things about. I just haven't read them yet because I have to get some stuff off my TBR. Although my birthday is August 12th, and I always ask for books. So if I get some books off my TBR, which I will. So I've been reading like between six and like nine books a month, um, then I'll have a, a lot of room for some new things. Because I'm hoping I have a bunch of stuff on my wish list, but I'm also I'm hoping to get um, the next Robin Hop books in the, in the Live Ship Trader series to finally start that. Um, and what other ones have I like really? What do I have ranked like very highly for like another one? Let's see. I recently ranked things. So you'll know what I'll likely get because people tend to buy me things like my family and my friends and stuff. Tend to buy me things that are like rated really high. Oh, Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. It's not out yet, but it will be this month. The Mask of Mirrors. Um, Daughter of the Moon Goddess. There's more than just that on here, but I'm reading the ones that are highest ranked. Memory Called Empire, which I'll probably read before if I want to read it this month. If We Were Villains. 
the Jasmine Throne, For the Wolf. Those are my highest ranked. Oh, and then Queen of Blood. That's been on my list forever. No one gets a throne. Um, yeah. So those are all my highest ranked ones. But there's obviously more. And I like, when I go into one of my local bookstores, I tend to pick something up. Because um, I just got, oh, the other day, I just went to the bookstore and picked up a copy of um, Book Lovers, even though I've already read it, but I wanted a physical copy. And then I got The First Sister because we're reading this for book club and in like July or August or something. And then like a sale copy of The City We Became, uh, which is interesting because um, there's it's like not damaged at all, but it was on sale for... $6.99. Like, I literally don't know, like, why this was on sale. Anyway. Because it had, oh, maybe, is there, like, a slight smudge, maybe? Maybe, maybe this was the reason? But if so, on sale from $17.99 to $6.99. Um, for the Wolf is Everything, I think I'm really going to like it. Yeah. Jocelyn's Throne didn't look up to the height for me. Still good and read the sequel, but had a lot of pacing issues. I really like her books, so I'm hoping. I'm into it. Kai Kei, which I don't, I feel like I've said, I've seen that book around. Electra, which I'm not going to read. And the start of Steve's book of the month, Dix, and maybe on the list. Okay, Electra, I mean, I guess um, Ariadne's on the list last time, but it like, really wasn't that good. So I don't plan on reading Electra. I originally did plan on reading it, but now I'm like, no. Because she didn't do anything interesting with um, Ariadne. So I was like, no. Like, if you're going to do a retelling, like, do something with a little bit more substance, personally, I feel. So, okay. So now that I know that I need to... I need to prioritize the Hugo books. And then it doesn't look like either the Nebulas just happened or they're like gonna happen after. The Nebulas and the Hugos, like the way they line up is really wonky. Like usually the Nebula winners will be for like the year before in the Hugos. It's odd the way that it's set up. For YA, that good resource is based on who the publisher invests their money in. Yeah, those authors get the most visibility, visibility on the team librarian, 100%. 100%. The teen one is always like a little like, I mean, all the whole Goodreads list is a little bit blah, but a lot of the books that I'm reading this year were from last year's Goodreads list for the fantasy stuff. So what's been your favorite read so far this year? I was thinking about that because I'm going to be doing like the mid-year check-in like in July. Um, If I go to my monthly stats list, because I have like a favorites. Okay, I look at all my favorite books by month. Hmm. Of, oh man, I've read a number of things. I've read a number of things that are rereads, and so I don't really count those. But of new books, I think. Possibly The Wolf and the Woodsman, which was a January read, or Iron Widow. Um, I read a bunch last month that I really liked too. Like I had like three favorites from last month. Um, I, have, I have a lot of favorites this year. I'm very excited for already my end of the year <laughs> like stats because I've been reading a lot of stuff. Because right now, like if I go to my uh, or star rating, That's star rating. Okay, yeah. So right now my stats sit at. 22.9% five stars, 31.4% um, four stars, 34.3% three stars, 8.6% two stars, and 2.9% one star. So I've given one one star, um, three two stars, 12 three stars, uh, 11 four stars, and eight five stars. I like those stats. Those are some good stats. Um, I DNF'd Ariadne so quick I did not care about anything happening. I was listening to it on an audiobook, otherwise I, I would have DNF'd it. Her really good thing is about 
Kai Kei. It's a Mithritos anthology. Ooh. I feel like I've seen this cover recently. Yes, I have. Yes, I've seen people talk about that one. Daughter of the Moon should not be adult. It should be white. I didn't realize it was adult. I assumed it was YA from the covers. Yeah, I wrote was so good. I wrote was so good. But I wrote a lot of really good books this year. A lot in series that I enjoy. A lot of standalones. I've been, I've been doing really good. Um, I think I've only DNF'd one book. Yeah, only DNF one. Finished four series. We love to see it. How does it know this? How did I do that? Oh, that's how I did it. I was like, how did you find that number? Um, I amazed myself. Because I put all of the stuff into the spreadsheet at the beginning of the year, and then I like forget how it does all of it. Um, so yeah, very exciting. Very exciting. Um, are there any series that I haven't already started that you guys really feel like I should read? Just curious. Because I do plan on, just tell me what to do. Um, so right now, especially like completed series. So like, I'm gonna finish up Poppy War probably like next month. I'm gonna finish up Wayfarers. Um, and then I'm thinking, like a lot of other series are like, longer and I don't really want to like like I want to keep reading the expanse series but I think <laughs> tragically I need to go back and restart it I think because it's been so long that like I think I, I need to like re-get traction on that uh and I'll have a better time with it I mean I still really like them anyway but like I need to do that so I'm thinking I'm going to be trying to finish up like Stray by Rachel Vincent which is urban fantasy series continue with Kate Daniels but like of some like finished series. I'm a little bit iffy on Great Coast because I haven't been like super drawn to it. I kind of want to finish Arc of the Scythe. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of my other series are just like so long that I'm like, oh, I don't want to like, I don't want to do that yet. Like all of my trilogies. So after I finish The Poppy War and then after I finish Arc of the Scythe, nothing else is a trilogy on here. Just a lot of really long series. So any trilogy that should start? <laughs> uh, I went through my good reasons to start taking off a lot of YA because I'm more interested in adult now. Same, I like never even go to YA section anymore. Unless I get a recommendation. Like Iron Widow is being recommended so fiercely that I was like, all right, it's gonna be good. The only thing I've been reading are articles and chapters from my masters. Mm, sad. I've read the Tethered Mage. No, but I think that I heard of that. Oh, that yes, that that bird book. I've seen this. It's it's good. It's good. Venetian. All right. Okay. Yeah, Scythe is really good. Yeah, I read the first book and just haven't continued with it yet. The Silver by Tanya Huff. Oh, I, I think I've seen this cover. I think I've seen this cover. Interesting. Okay, okay, okay. Are we interesting to hear your Mysteries of the Empire by Yoon Ha Lee Thoughts. So I've read the first two books in that series um, for the Book 2 SF Awards. Didn't really like the first book. I liked the second one more. Is there three? I could finish that up. Um, I liked the second one better because I read it on audio. But that's a weird series, for sure. Um, of my weird sci-fi series, besides the Lock Tomb series, which I'm going to continue to read, um, I do want to get back to the Terra Ignata series uh to like the lightning is the first book um but i need to reread to like the lightning because i read it back in like 2019 or 2018 and it's fucking weird um 
so I need to do that and then continue. And I feel like that's like a four book series. So, Rook and the Rose. It's Rook and the Rose. Oh, yeah, so I meant to that. Okay, The Mask of Mirrors. So I have that on my list. <laughs> I'm doing it. God King Chronicles. More recommendations for the Yoon Ha Lee Rack. I've read The Wolf on Darkness. No, but it was on my like list potentially. And the reader, I did not, I wasn't super interested in that from what I was hearing about it. There's some great fantasy novella series. Yeah, Empress of Salt and Fortune. All of the Pyramid Floating in the Water. Wait, is that that one? Oh, that's really pretty. I think I've seen this cover. Yes. I've seen things about this author around. I've heard mixed things about Rage of Dragons. And I do want to read John Gwynn. So I'm going to restart Malice because I started Malice like back in, um, I want to say 2020 or 2019 and like couldn't get into it. But I know a lot of people that really like it that I trust. So I'm going to try to restart that. And if I don't like that, possibly just reach out of the gods. But I want to try to read that first. I do, I do want to read Dowry of Blood. Um, I do. Yeah, that's on my list. It's actually on my list um, because it fits one of the uh, book challenge titles uh, for the yearly reading challenge I'm doing. I also think I like Children of Time. Yeah, so I want to read Children of Time. So of the big, like, currently big, really, really big sci-fi series, um, besides, like, the expansive ones that are ongoing, more recent ones, I want to read Children of Time and um, the Memory Call Empire one. What are you doing? What are some of the epic series that you've had on your list forever? I'm only just started Mistborn. Um, I, so of the big series that I have on my list that I like need to read, catch up on. So The Expanse, um, The Song of Shattered Sands by Bradley Galeo. I read the first two books. I probably need to go back. I think book five is out, if not book six. Um, and Terra Ignata, like I mentioned, and Stormlight. And I need to probably do Miss Born Era too, but I'm not going to reread those because you read the fourth book. Um, those are the big ones. And then, yeah, the other ones are still ongoing, so I get less nervous about those. So, yeah, and then I have like, I'm currently still like reading through the Anita Blake series. There's like 30 books in that series, so not trying to finish that anytime soon. Um, own bastards i'm going to plan on catching up until we actually get a release for the fourth book for fuck's sake um and then yeah like kate daniels things like that so i don't really have too too much ongoing but after i finish up some of these ones that are ongoing um then i just have long series left have you watched multiverse of madness no because i haven't yet watched spider-man no way home I feel like I kind of want to watch that first. Maybe I don't need to. I don't know. Um, I just kind of want to have some context. I'm really behind a lot of the Marvel shows. I know I don't need to watch all of them. Um, I watched WandaVision, so I know that's all that like truly matters. Uh, but I just feel we're doing it out of order. So, have you read Sylvia Moreno Garcia? Yes, I've read Gods of Jade and Shadow, but I haven't read the Beautiful Ones. Um, we're also going to read Doctor Moreau's Daughter when it comes out for book club. I'm also excited for Babel and the new Priory book. Where's the Calion? Political Purity. I have not read of all, all of Temporary, but I think I'm giving up on it. Uh, not because I don't really enjoy it, but I think it, it gave me what I needed it to give. And book three was like fine. And like, it's just, it's a very long series. Will I maybe continue it at some point? Possibly. But I'm kind of just like, I'm good. 
if I ever want just a cute <laughs> Napoleonic War <laughs> fantasy, um, then I'll pick it back up again. But I'm not super drawn to it right now. I know I'm behind on Ghibli. I'm behind on. I'm watching like no TV. I um, I do want to get back into gaming. I've been getting back into gaming. If you're not, a lot of you are Twitch people, so you already know this. But my Twitch streams are like back to being games again for the most part um, because I've missed gaming. I'm trying to put some limitations on myself with the TikToking, so I'm reading more and potentially gaming more. Like probably tonight and this weekend, I'm gonna. Um, like, just read and play video games. So. Have you ever gone into a series with no previous knowledge and loved it? No. I mean, I have as a teenager, like, um, Sabriel, I picked up not knowing anything about it. Um, the Abortion series. Um, any of the books that I read as a teenager before we had, like, Goodreads and everything else, I read just with nothing. But I feel like I can't do that now. Would it be a great experiment? Yes. Do I just want to go into something knowing I'm generally speaking going to like it? Yes. Like, and generally speaking, I do know about most book series. Like, it would be very hard for me to find a fantasy series, like a newer one, right? That's in like a bookstore or whatever, that I like don't know something about. So it'd be very hard for me to just like pick something up on a whim. Um, is that app working for you? Which app? Did I mention an app? Oh, the TikTok, the blocking. Yes, it is. Um, it's tough because I can't block it every day because it's like, you can only schedule it one day. But I think I might buy it so I can make it block. Because uh, like the other day, I had posted a video and there was, I was getting like comments on it on TikTok and I wanted to keep checking TikTok. And then at 1130, it was like, can't. And I was like, okay. And then I read the rest of the night, which was great. Um, sorry if you already answered, but did you buy anything from the fantasy fundraiser sale for the, there was a fantasy fundraiser sale? Hold on. I don't think I've seen this. Fantasy book. Fantasy book. Yeah, this is just showing me fundraisers from like, like GoFundMe's. Where's this at? I would buy something to support. Um, I like to remember, but I wish the series was more dragons and less than exactly. That's exactly so. Like I like it but like when it becomes so war focused i'm like i can only really read so much of this like and they're doing like war maneuverings and whatever and i'm like okay like eh. what was your first ever adult five-star read oh god um i definitely read like adult fantasy books pre-booked too but I don't know, I was never really like rating them. I mean, like, you need to blade books. Um, but on booktube, what was my first like adult fan? The Night Circus, probably. And then after the Night Circus would probably be like, maybe a Brandon Sanderson book? Maybe? Maybe. I wish every series in the world was more dragons, same. And like the temporary dragons are like so great, um, but yeah, since they're like war dragons, it's like they do all the war stuff. Yeah, maybe I should like maybe if I open the ad block, it'll be like we will give you a special one time offer of like less less money for premium. Ooh, here we go. Yeah, I mean, it's 20 bucks for the year, but I think it might be worth it. And right now it's like 44% off if I do that. 
also heard social recommendations from me lately has been the use of those authors. I would probably never read an author newsletter. Not because, like, I just, I would forget and I wouldn't check my email. I've heard good things about Natural History of Dragons. I've heard really good things about it because that's more like anthropology dragons. So. Okay, I'm coming. Should I buy it? I guess I can block TikToks and I shouldn't be on it anymore. Let me. I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I did it. I think it'll be good for me. I think it'll be good for me. Okay, so now I can enjoy app blocks. So and now, like every work night, let me add the days. So, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Really, every day at eleven thirty p.m. is when I should be cut it off. Right? Do we feel like that's true? Because my brain wants to be like, well, on the weekends you can watch more TikTok. But I think, I think I should not. All days. All days from 11.30 p.m. to whenever I wake up. I'm cut off. I'm cut off. And that's good. I think it's gonna be very healthy for me. And it like literally doesn't let you like you open it and it's like, no, no. And you can block any app. So if I need to, like, if I start replacing it with something else, oh man. See, I'm not gonna block Instagram as one of those yet, but I might. Like, if I start to try to replace my TikTok scrolling with another app. then I will do that. Because I've, I've always had the like um, screen time <clears throat> timers, but you can, you can snooze those. And then I just keep doing it. I do it all day. I've watched over two TikToks and bought Weave Liminal. Yes. Do you have any other recommendations like Weave Liminal? So it's not the same as Weave Liminal, but I'm gonna make some more videos on some of my like favorites of the witchy books. Um, but I'm currently reading Spellcrafting by Aaron Murphy Hiscock, and I really like that. Um, Psychic Witch by Matt Oren. Um, the Book of Candle Magic by Madame Pamita. Those are my three, four, whatever that was, favorites uh, of the ones I've read so far. Yeah. Rick Riordan does Goodreads reviews? I love that. Are there any witch type books you'd recommend avoiding? There's a, I don't know the author's name, but there's a book literally just called Witch that has a black cover and like a moon on it. And it's like pretty old at this point. Uh, that's a turf book. Don't read that. Um, I don't particularly like, like a lot of people recommend like the classics, like Cunningham and Buckland uh, are two authors. Uh, I don't read those because they're one really wicked influenced and two, again, it's men. Um, it just feels very like weird, colonized, like whatever. I tend to read primarily witchcraft books by women, but especially women of color. Like those are the ones that I, or like people, if it's white women, it's women that have like tried to decolonize their practice. Like, so that's what I tend to go for. Um, there's other like, pro like, uh, so, is it someone, Raven Wolf is another like problematic older Wiccan author, but I've never read any of those. I just know to like avoid them. I use bedtime mode for all social media and the way it has changed my life. So is bedtime mode an app or is it like on your phone? Cause yeah, like I said, I just like, it will turn it off for me. It'll be like, oh, you're locked out of your apps. And I'll just be like, I'm... I'm gonna try to just keep snoozing it ad nauseum. I wish I could block YouTube because I use infinite scroll things. See, I won't do that with YouTube. Yeah, this app blocker, yes. The reason that I got this app blocker is because it was recommended and it's like you can't easily um, go in and like shut it off because I also would, I would just like delete it. 
um, and Wolf doesn't like you. <laughs> so I've heard a lot of controversial things about Raven Wolf that she was the first author I have read, which is valid because her and Cunningham and Buckland used to be like the only ones around. So like that makes sense. I usually only watch YouTube these days when I'm doing something. So YouTube tends to be less problematic for me than like TikTok. That book's something, um, Women Who Run With Wolves. Oh, that's an old one that people avoid now. There's another one that's something about wolves, but that's newer, that's supposed to be better. Look up Irish Pagan School. Not that. I like a lot of the, um, I've been like following more people that are, have like, uh, are like Irish or German or like British folk magic practitioners that are like re-embracing their like ancestral craft without being like racist. We love to see it. I had a book years ago about New Orleans magic. I should have bought that and put too many books about that. But... Well, the tough thing about like, like New Orleans magic is it's probably going to be a closed practice. Like, I would be careful about that because a lot of, um, like, Creole um, magic would be, like, voodoo hoodoo, and that's closed. So that means, like, you can't just practice that if you're not an initiate. And generally speaking, if you're not, like, a black African-American, because that's an African-American tradition specifically, um, it's probably not something to be, like, practicing. But people for a while would write, like, hoodoo and voodoo books, and they'd be, like, white people. So, an issue. And you do Charles Morgan. Okay. Love people that work with Morgan. I've been a little bit like. The Queen's face was on Stonehenge for her Jubilee. That they, they, they like cast her face onto Stonehenge, like with the projector or something. What are you doing? Come up here. Sir. Getting hungry. I don't know what I'm gonna have for dinner. Come here. You want you to come up here? Meow. 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 Come on up. Meow. 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 Come on. Up. I'm not picking you up. Come on. Speaking of so many of Ravens, up close and personal. <gasps> Clovis. I saw someone on TikTok that had like basically a pet crow. It wasn't a pet crow. Um, but basically a pet crow. And I want them so bad. Come on up. She try him. Um, have you been to Australia? I haven't, but I want to. Come on. I wanted to study abroad there and then I got nervous and I didn't. Come on. Up us. Do it. Do it. You're ridiculous. Hey, Edris, so just right after watching my real review of yours. I love that. What book was it for? Your animals are so adorable, right? Come on. Oh my goodness. Come here. I said I wasn't going to pick her up, but she's a baby, so. Say, you's a baby. Hi. Thank you all so much. You guys get purring ASMR. Don't lick my face. I love you. Love of my life. I hate the way it's kind of all countries are like forced to celebrate the Jubilee, right? Like, what has the queen ever done for us? Honestly. She did win. She was like, I will cry until you pick me up. Do you guys see what she does? This is what she does. She gives me hugs. Do we, which is in your experience, are familiar as like Orcus Ravens or um, some people uh, have familiars, but it's not like super, super common, I would say. Like, a lot of people will more so joke about their like pets being familiars when they're not necessarily. But I would say that it's like not a super common practice. The Dark Life. Oh, nice. That's a good one. That's one of the only Hades Persephone books that have actually been good that I've read. Thank you for rubbing your face on me. Hi. You wanted to be up here so bad, what are you looking around for? My sweet angel. 
What do you guys do for the Jubilee? Or what does the government do for the Jubilee? I haven't even been paying attention. That's Hi. Oh, so sweet. So sweet. Beautiful girl. I want to carry you around in a backpack, but I can't because you get motion sickness. The second she goes in a carrier these days, she vomits. Scarlet St. Clair, um, I've only read the one and I did not think it was good. It was very poorly written. Have you read the Hollow series? I have not, but I do plan on like the Hollow series, the um, Patricia Briggs, Mercy Thompson, um, all of those I do plan on getting to, but I want to finish up Stray first and potentially um, Kate Daniels before I jump into another urban fantasy series. Nobody does anything in Canada. Many parades and constant news broadcasts. Interesting. Do you have a reading challenge plan for this month? Tentatively. So I was going to do something, um, a certain themed reading vlog. And now I'm going to do the Hugos. <laughs> Try to read the Hugo nominees for novels and novellas since I have until August. So, so salty there isn't a sequel, even though it would have to diverge his own thing. Emily Rice? I know. It, it, it would be, I, would, I wouldn't mind a sequel since so many other age for something books get sequels. Where are you going? You're falling. Uh uh. Hold yourself up. Like a baby. Like a baby. My old lady baby. Yes. You're so sweet. <laughs> Ooh. The Ninth Doctor has a great blurb about the Jubilee. That's the Doctor. I watched that whole season. I'm surprised I don't remember that. That was years ago, though. It was like 10 years ago. Are you happy? She's making little muffins with her feet. You guys can see. What kinds of urban fantasy would you recommend for newbies? 30 book series are a bit intimidating. Well, that's the thing, is like most of them are. <laughs> um, I would say, honestly, like, Kate Daniels seems pretty decent, um, because I feel like it's like six or seven, maybe it's like nine, I forget, um, but it's a little bit shorter than some of these really long ones. Um, I would recommend the Sookie Stackhouse books, but they don't end very well, but like, the middle is like really good. Um, if you want something like really straightforward that's just about like one type of paranormal creature, the Stray series by Rachel Vincent's pretty decent for that because it's like just rare cats. Uh, but if you want like a little bit of everything, I would say Kate Daniels uh, because it is shorter than Anita Blake. So, who is your favorite Olympian? Um, Persephone. I like a lot of the Greek gods. Uh, I love almost all of them um but yeah like persephone hades akate I go, although i guess she's more of a chthonic god i don't know if they would consider her olympian um nyx more of a chaos creature uh entity being from before the gods uh nyx isn't a titan no nyx is a god um aphrodite Athena, Artemis. I stand them all. <laughs> I love them all. Maybe I'll play Hades tonight. <laughs> Did you just drool on me? You gross. You got drool on me. Why is she sitting like this? <laughs> but sure. Bend your arms. <laughs> yeah, Iron Druid has a lot of books. Like, most of the urban fantasy books have a ton of books. They're not contained things. Gross Kitty is gross. She can drool sometimes, but, like, it's kind of cute. She actually has an ear infection right now, so her ears are all gross because they have to put in them. Nice. I thought it was tame. Yeah, that's why I'm saying like Kate Daniels or Stray 
little bit shorter. But the thing with urban fantasy is like you can kind of like pick it up and put it down. Like there is an overarching meta plot, but like if you just want to read some and then like be done, like you you kind of can. Like they're very monster of the week, which is why I love them. Uh, because it's just like okay, like right now I'm reading one of the Anita books, and like again there is overarching background stuff happening, but it's more so about the monster of the week stuff. Why? You look like a sweet baby. Are you the person who's stuck in a cat's body? I believe that you are. She's staring into my soul right now with her eyes. I wish you guys can see. <laughs> Do you want to get down? Or are you fine? I mean, you're purring like this. What are the pros and cons of... Oh, okay. So you wanted to leave. Of streaming on Twitch versus YouTube versus Instagram. Um, Twitch kind of like... Twitch is made for streaming, so that's like the best one, and you can like add stuff to it, make it really personal. YouTube is cool because um, you just like have your subscriber base, um, and then Instagram is like nice for impromptu, but I think it's like hard to get like a bunch of people on there if if they're not like scrolling or have their notifications on. So, but Twitch is like the best for live streaming, but also like the most complicated to like get into. Um, YouTube is kind of middle of the road, and then Instagram is just like, I can just pop on there. I really want to read The River of Silver. I also am going to probably read that at some point. Ooh, Lady Sing books. I also want to get into post finishing up some of the series. So, Legendborn is good. Legendborn is a good starting point for YA. I've also heard the Poppy Word universe is expanding. I no. I don't like that. Twitch quality personalization emote sub badges. Yes. YouTube more utilitarian. TikTok trash. I get it. Um, I haven't really gone live on TikTok. I've gone live on TikTok like twice. And I just think I don't have a big enough base there that like I get enough people talking because lives are not fun if you don't have people chatting with you. Like so, especially a TikTok live. So it's like, but TikTok lives and Instagram lives are like very similar. Um, so it's more so about like having enough of a platform. But for some reason, I feel like even though I have more followers on TikTok, my Instagram followers are more like following because they're actually interested. Um, so, yeah. Poppy War is a prequel. Of the trio. Has she said? I don't know what that means. Are they gonna write more? And the Poppy War is like a prequel to the other ones? The streamer I moderate for is trying to branch out, and I told him, no, I refuse to moderate TikTok. I mean, I don't have anyone moderate other streaming stuff. I just moderate myself because it tends to be smaller. Do you stream your, yes, I use stream for YouTube lives. I used to go direct on my phone, because it's easier to do on your phone direct, but um, stream your for the computer. Any suggestions for any other sapphic series? I'd love to find something else. I mainly read horror and cyberpunk novels. Um, have you read the Locked Tomb series? If you like horror, um, it's not completely horror, but it's like, or sci-fi sapphic. These are good. Um, other sapphic series. Um, a lot of, I have a lot of sapphic things in other books. Like, Prior of the Orange Tree is sapphic, but not sci-fi. Um, but it's fantasy. I hesitantly recommend the Nevernight series, but it is my favorite, like one of my favorite sapphic series. But like Jay Kristoff's like kind of a trash can. Um, the Lock Tomb series. So the first book is Gideon the Ninth, and the second book is Harrow of the Ninth. Yes. <laughs> Those top notch. But the romance is not like, it's more subtle, but it's there. She's writing about the Emperor, the Scholar, and the Emperor. 
Oh, as a prequel. Really? I mean, I'd be kind of down. Okay. I'd be kind of down. Would you really want us to mod your other media? I mean, it's not even that. It's more so like I don't need it. You know, like if the, like the, these lives and stuff aren't big enough to need it. And I'm also not doing anything. Like I'm not multitasking. The reason I need moderators on Twitch is because I'm gaming. Yeah, the Pride of the Orange Tree is so large. I know. I also kind of wanted to read Empire of the Vampire because I fucking love vampires. And people that have read it like it, but I'm like, he's a garbage can. I hate when authors are like that. Did you read Ember of the Ashes whole series? I did not. Um, I'm actually going to make a TikTok about this because somebody asked me about it on TikTok. I read the first book and it was like fine. Like I liked it at the time. I've like totally forgotten about it now. Um, and I tried to read the second book four different times. Like on physical copy and on audio. And like could not get into it. So I just DNF the series. Priory is... Um, if you've read Hobbin Sanderson, it's not bad. It's just, you just have to get into it. Because I was also really intimidated, and then it, like, I, it went by fairly fast. Who was the trash can? Jake Kristoff. Sadly. I do have interest in reading Legends and Lattes. Yes. People have been... I need to add that to my wish list, actually. Um, I've been hearing a lot of people talk about that as well. I haven't seen it in a bookstore. Though... And oh, is it not available on paperback? No, it has to be. Maybe it's not. A novel of high fantasy and low stakes. That's cute. The Priory Companion is about 3,000 words, 30,000 words longer. That's... Yeah, the Priors people has been working start the same. Same. Um, I guess let me add this to my list. Oh, it hasn't been published physically in the US yet. Got it. So I could order it from Book Depository. Book Depository. There's going to be a companion for Priory. The audiobook is excellent. Okay, okay. That is good. It's not on my wish list. I will read it. I'm very excited. I've been hearing good things about it. So many things to read. I am, so what, like purely out of curiosity, and I know you guys are biased because you're watching me, so you obviously like me and the content I make. What booktube content do you guys actually like watching these days? Because when I look up booktube, so I was, also, I was just doing recon. Um, there's a lot of like, people do a lot of reading vlogs and they're like, I read these like 12 books. And I'm like, I don't read that fast, y'all. Like I read fast for like, in comparison to like a lot of people, but like, not enough to do like multiple reading vlogs a month. Like, it's wild. Like, so, and that's what I see the most of. And like, that's what I see trending a lot. So like, what do you guys, what do you guys like? I'm just like really curious. Cause like book tags are like not even really a thing anymore. At least I don't see them. Um, so yeah, like what's, what's the beat on the booktube content? I don't think the RF Kuang expanding her world thing will end up like Cursed Child because when authors expand their world shortly after ending the original series, I'm fine with it. It's when they wait a long time that it becomes a debacle. Have you read Reminders of Him? I haven't read any Colin Hoover books. Have you read any? Um, Colin Hoover is not my cup of tea. I've read maybe someday. I've read like three or four of her books uh, from like 10 years ago. Um, maybe someday is the only one that I liked. And I like genuinely do like it. She writes trauma porn. Her writing quality is like not up to what I prefer. Um, I think there's other books that handle 
tough topics better. Um, I just think she writes stuff for the sake of being shocking. So she's not, she's not what I prefer, but I'm also not her target audience. So, um, are you still feeling good about your physical TBR size? I am. It feels very achievable. Um, I'm not adding to it at a very rapid rate. Also, I think a lot of publishers don't have my new address. So I don't get set random books that I then add to my TBR. Because I'm like, oh, that sounds good. I'll read that. And then I'm like, it just looks there. Um, so now I'm only getting books that I like request, which I request things very rarely. Like I request things basically publishers like Tor and like Orbit and some of them will send out like, here's our seasonal like what's coming up and you can select books that you're interested in and then they may or may not send them to you. So like that's how I end up getting even sent books these days. Like I very rarely get sent books these days at all. Uh, mostly because they kind of, I think they figured out that like if they send me something unsolicited, I'm not going to talk about it or read it. Um, and then I have books that I mostly have gotten as gifts for my birthday and Christmas. So that's mostly what my parents and my friends buy me for gifts. So I'm pretty content with my TBR because it's mostly been curated by me at this point. I love wrap-ups and reviews. Your decluttering content is still my absolute fave. Thanks. I feel like I don't have anything else to declutter now, though, so I can't make content about it. I only like reading vlogs here and there. I like to see people's lives, but sometimes it seems a little bit much. Yeah, like, I could see myself doing a reading vlog, like, maybe, like, once a month. But, again, it would be, like, that's all the books I'm reading that month, then. Most people, the only person who doesn't really like watching reading vlogs. I like a good theme recommendation list. Me, too. I like wrap-ups and more. I think we talk about this elsewhere, but I like top tens, and hundreds, hauls, and then hauls and wrap ups. I haven't been doing a lot of hauls lately because I've been really buying into books. I feel like book tags move to TikTok. Oh, you're right. I have seen them on TikTok. Um, wrap ups, recent reads, a few TBR games, and vlogs. I mean, they have book recommendations. Uh, vlogs and different series. I did laugh when Colleen Hoover said she was overhyped on TikTok. I did too. What's trauma porn? It's basically just like adding a bunch of trauma into your books in a gratuitous way. That's what I refer to as trauma porn. Speaking of expanding years later, some of the newer books have been decent. And I would, so I read Clarial. Do I own Clarial? Or did I get rid of it? I think I got rid of it because I was like, eh, whatever. Um, but I would keep reading those or the new Graceling books that have come out. I also said I didn't like vlogs, but I like day in the life of a reader type of vlogs these days. So I'm not sure of book centered. Yeah, I hear you. I feel like I don't want to like vlog about stuff that's like not a ton um, like book centered. I see a lot of theme vlogs lately, but prefer rapid discussions, quarterly rankings, and reviews. I just prefer more targeted reading vlogs in a single book over a shorter time period. This is very interesting to know. I know you guys are biased because you actually like my content and I do a lot of this. So, like, I'm not necessarily getting, like, a general beat on everything, but still. I'm watching people's weekly vlogs and rapids recently. Most of my book content is from TikTok as of late, though. Same. I could never do, like, a weekly wrap-up because I don't read enough to do that. Um... I like a themed reading vlog while some lifestyle almost mainly reading updates. Discussion and series reviews are fun. I like Friday reads, videos, weekly check-ins. Can you show us your most prettiest book? Um, it would probably be my Night Circus. I don't collect a lot of special editions. So like, my, oh, I'm sorry, baby. My special edition Night Circus is probably my prettiest. End pages. Yeah, it doesn't have it's end pages, nothing special. Um, but I don't collect special editions from like Illumina Crate and Fade Crate and stuff that a lot of people do. So I don't have a ton of like beautiful books. They're just normal. My Charlotte's is kind of cool, but it's like simple. So otherwise I have mostly normal editions of things. I have the shiny cover of Stunning Silver. I know it's not very popular to um, uh, collect pretty special editions now, but I do not. How did your bookish meetup go last weekend? Two people came. 
Apparently no one loves me. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, so uh, someone that lives in the neighborhood came, which was really nice. And then someone from out of town came uh, because they were in town that weekend. So it was nice. But I feel like people hate me. No, I'm just joking. Um, I, I think it's hard to like coordinate some of those things now because people feel really awkward. Like I had four people say they were going to come and then only two showed up. So it's like, did you get nervous? Like what happened? You know? I don't really watch booktube anymore. I mean, same. Um, I've just stopped with you and a couple others because I like your personality. Yeah, I just, I, I want I want it back. I want my love for it back. And Because I do get better recommendations from booktube. Your bookstore videos were awesome. Thanks. Also stats videos. Yes, I love a stats video. Like my favorite time of the year on booktube is like stats, favorites, all of that. So when we're coming up on mid-year check-ins, love to see it. Some of my favorite content to make. And like beginning of the year, end of the year, like I would say for me, content making wise, December, January, and um, like July are my favorites because <laughs> like, I like the stats and like goals and whatever. Weekly wrap ups and blogs are usually from those who read so much they wouldn't have uh, much meaningful to say if they only did it monthly. That's valid. Or it would just be like a lot. Like they would they would have like so much to talk about. Been liking what's cheering me up videos. I haven't seen those. Do you have a story behind that tattoo that you have on your arm? The owl, the owl one? Um, the owl one is for the Starless Sea, the book I just showed. Uh, it's, yeah, it, this whole sleeve is, I mean, it's only three tattoos right now, but it, that's all going to be book related. So this is from the Starless Sea, this is from the Night Circus, and this is, this one's really hard to show. Um, this is from a Prudent. It's okay, I know you guys live far away. It's fine. I, lo I love a goal update. I love a, um, like a five-star TBR, but like I have a five-star TBR thing and like I feel like I can only do it like twice a year because the amount of time it takes me to eventually get around to reading those like five-star guesses, you know? I'll have to look up these like what makes me happy ones. I can also tell I've been watching last year because last year this time I was inundated by mid-year book freak out tags and this year my feed is silent. Yeah, I mean, again, most of the people that I follow are no longer making content. So, any tattoo plans for Dave Abad? Yes, but I don't quite know what I'm going to get. I think someone, the action symbol is what someone recommended and I was like, that's very smart because it would kind of go with this. So, yes. I also was thinking that I need to do something for the Becky Chambers books for the, um, the Wayfarer series, because they're all, all five stars for me. The problem is, is that all of these have been really easy to do because I've had an image that has stuck out to me. I don't want to just like pull something out of my ass um, to put something on there for Wayfarers. And Wayfarers, because it's a sci-fi, is not going to really go with the, my like fantasy arm. Um, so I don't know what to do uh, for Wayfarers. Like if I did like a ship or something, it's not going to fit. So I don't even think about like what, oh, I did think potentially from the third book, like for those of you that have read it, you know how they like pot a plant for like sort of representing earth. I was kind of thinking about doing like that plant potentially. I did think about that the other day. Maybe do a meetup at Worldcon. I do plan to do that. I do plan to do that with the SFF people for sure. Do you watch Shelly swear, swear, swearing again? No. Shelly, Shelly, how do you spell that? I'm also patiently waiting for Mari's return to YouTube because she's a bit of long form content. And reviews are amazing. And she's mostly making content on TikTok because the engagement on YouTube is so poor these days. We've been talking about that. It's been a nightmare. I've gotten to the point where I'm now losing subscribers and it's like so demotivating. Yeah, reading sprints and hangouts are super popular. If you guys like a reading sprint, I do those on Twitch. So, yeah. Ooh, so I could do, not necessarily the team monk, because I don't really want to have like a person, um, but I could do like 
a mystical cup of tea for Becky Chambers books for the for the tea mug. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. I like that. Because again, it's subtle. It's not supposed to be obvious. It's David Bott, a book or an author. It's a trilogy. David Bott trilogy. Um, let's do that. Becky Chambers. Peacock. I love Star Wars. See, wrote it twice since March reading again now. So what other books do you think would be good to read along those lines? Um, besides The Night Circus? Um, there's really nothing for that Star Wars. You might be more into like magical realism or like fabulism books. Um, again, not quite the same, but like Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender, any of the, um, who's that author? I can literally see their covers. They're Hispanic. They, they usually feature queer characters in their YA. Those might give a similar vibe. I'm forgetting the name. One of you is gonna say who it is. Um, yeah, no one really quite has. I mean, yeah, nothing's quite like the Star Wars. To be quite honest, yeah, the strange and beautiful sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. I have a review for it from like, yes, Anna Marie McLemore. Thank you. That's what I was talking about. Um, fabulism is magical realism, but magical realism is um, specifically created by, again, like Hispanic. I don't know if it's specifically Mexican. I think it's just Hispanic in general people. Like it's a genre that's like for like made by them, whatever. So if a white person's writing that same style, it shouldn't be called magical realism, it should be called fabulism, which is the same thing. Yes, like Wild Beauty and um, all of those. Yes. So try that. Um, I think I would say The Strange Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender is like the closest. It's, it's not quite the same. It's more, uh, it's basically an inter intergenerational story that follows three women in this family, but the most recent girl is born with angel wings, but then it goes back and kind of like covers the family. And all of it is like, is this magic? Is this metaphor? Like, and that's what magical realism and fabulism is. So, but again, Starless Sea is like its own, its own thing. Like only she can um, write it quite like that. So. What are you doing? Why are you back? You don't need to be back. We've got tons of photos. I'm writing all these down, so I'm sorry. You can rewind the video when it goes live. It's kind of weird. I haven't read any Roald Dahl books. I have not. Um, I don't tend to read middle grade because it doesn't really like jive with me. But I know that his books are like good and well loved and like brilliant. I just don't tend to read middle grade books. They're just not, not completely my jam. But I respect them for what they are. I forgot about that. Yeah, you can go back and you'll be a great time. I think I need to start thinking about what I'm going to eat for. Because I ordered out for lunch. Oh my gosh. Binks has been laying behind my computer this whole time. I didn't even know he was there. She's the one that's been crying and carrying on. He's been back there. There we go. Yes, magical realism was popularized by South American authors in a post-colonial literary context. Thank you for that more exact definition. I just knew it was like, white people can't write magical realism, um, they can write fabulism though. Which is like similar, but just doesn't have the like historical context. So, what should I eat for dinner? Maybe I'll just make a tofu bowl. I ate out for lunch, so I feel like I can't order food even though I deeply kind of want to. But 
I ordered a burger for lunch. So I shouldn't order takeout again for dinner. You could do a series where you help the other booktubers declutter. I would love to do that. Um, but I would feel kind of bad being like, hi, you're a mess. Can I help you make your TBR smaller? <laughs> so. I've been hearing good things about Piranesi. I haven't read it. I actually like unhauled it because I had it. And I unhauled it. So. Um, it's kind of genius. I don't think I have anything to make breakfast foods though. I would love to be known as the Marie Kondo booktube. I mean, I could tweet about it and be like, any booktubers want me to help them cull their TBRs and we do like a live show? I'm open to it. I'm open to it. I've heard of McDonald's. Yeah, I, like I said, I had a burger earlier at Burger and Fries. Um, it was a plant burger. It was a vegan burger. I mean, not vegan because it had cheese on it. It was vegetarian. Um, from a place that's really close to me and it was good. Uh, so I should probably just make something. Probably make a tofu burger. Isn't fabulous and closer to surrealism and magical realism? I've always been told that fabulism is the name for magical realism for people that like aren't South American. So, I don't know. I don't know enough about like all the individual genres to necessarily know. How's your food stuff been going? Um, <laughs> have you been feeling better? So I don't think I actually have a dairy sensitivity. I could be wrong. Um, but I eat it when I'm out and like I'm fine. We've basically been, my doctor like, cause I cut some stuff out and like it wasn't really noticing a big difference. I'm still not eating dairy at home though. I think that kind of helps with my skin. Um, and I just feel like it's better anyway, and if I can, like, why not? Um, and if I go someplace that has, like, vegan options, I tend to eat them, but I don't stick to it completely. And I haven't been eating eggs. I kind of do miss eggs. I might try eggs again. Uh, eggs were, like, such a big part of my diet. Um, but, and I eat eggs, like, in things. Um, but yeah, I didn't notice a big difference. What I have been doing is, um, my doctor gave me like basically like an IBS antibiotic that you can take like once a year. And then, um, and I took it for like two weeks and then like probiotics and like supplements to just like help with like gut health stuff. And that seems to be working. So yeah, uh, I, I've been feeling like way better in the last like month or so since we started that, but it hasn't really been for food elimination reasons. So, but like I said, I still eat a certain way at home. Who is your favorite singer? Um, I like Halsey, I like Paris, I like Dorothy. I don't really get very fixated on like certain singers and stuff though. It doesn't necessarily make sense to me that only the name would be different if it's a cultural thing. I'll have to look further into this. It's like, I'm not explaining it really well because I don't read a ton of like magical rules and fabulism, but I've been told that basically like you shouldn't be using the name magical realism because it's like a cultural, um, cultural specific thing. So sort of similar to what I was talking about earlier with witchcraft, where like people that aren't African Americans shouldn't be doing voodoo, voodoo, whatever. Same kind of thing, like people who are not, again, this is what I've heard, not like in charge, um, but that people that are not South American aren't writing magical realism because that's a very specific thing. You know? Um, that's what I've been told. Like on reviews of mine, I've had. Um, like South American people be like, hey, that author's white, so they're not writing magical realism, they're writing fabulism. So, don't kill the messenger. What about the book built your house around my body? It's being described as magical realism as agent. I do not know about that book. 
Yes. It might be like how Afrofuturism only refers to a specific type of black sci-fi. I think it's along the lines of that. Yes, that's what I gather. Like it's it's like there's a certain there's a certain structure to this and like you and, and also kind of in the same vein, like white people should not be writing Afrofuturism. Same thing, you know. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it, it's a similar thing. Do you have your latest album? I, yes, I love everything Halsey does. I just meant I want to look further into the difference between magic wizard and fabulism so I can know more about the culture of test dogs. Yes, it's very much like a, like a generational, like, the, all the stuff about like colonization and stuff, it's very centered around that. Again, I haven't looked into it a ton because I haven't read a ton of them, so. Yes, so Fabulous and Magic Realism is similar to Champagne. It can only be Champagne if it comes from a specific region of France. Kind of, yes. This is not a TikTok thing, so I'm going to look at that. Yeah, it, this is this is not a TikTok thing. This has been a thing for, like, you know, back when I made reviews on BookTube, like, eight years ago, someone told me this. Like, multiple people told me this. So don't worry, Brie. It's not the TikTok youths making things happen that aren't really a thing. This was, like, people... Um, you know, not chronically online people telling me this. So, but I understand your concern. Your life is so addicting. Oh, thanks. I mean, I had to get up and get something to eat, but I'm not. Um... <laughs> you were like, it's not real because it's TikTok. And then I was like, it's not TikTok. And you're like, oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no, this was like, um, again, this was YouTube on like reviews um, from years ago um, that people were talking about this. Honestly, like, um, the looking at some of, like, the Latinx creators on uh, some of this might be helpful, too. Why do you think TikTok is gaining popularity? Um, it's addictive. The algorithm is superior to any other social media algorithm. Um, it's really easy to make content. Um, like, anybody can join, and there's, like, a very low barrier to entry. Um, and TikTok knows what to feed you based on the algorithm, and it's short form content is addicting. So it gets very confusing when you get deep in the weeds. One hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I also wouldn't have noticed what had told me. So yeah, TikTok has every reason to be as popular as it is. It's a very well made social media. Which is why I have to block it on my phone. <laughs> it's too addicting. Yes, Infinite Scroll produces infinite dopamine. Like, it's just... And there's this, like, FOMO of, like, you have to keep scrolling because maybe you're going to learn something new. Like, it's just... Yeah, not as much equipment needed. Like, TikTok actually rewards, like, organic authenticity. Not that YouTube isn't authentic. But, like, YouTube now, there's a certain expectation of, again, editing quality and, like, video quality and sound. Like, even right now when my sound is, like, kind of shitty in this room, I feel kind of bad because I'm, like, you know, people are used to a certain level of um, quality there. Um, but, yeah, like, it's, it's so much easier to make something look good on, like, TikTok or even just be, like, very organic rather than having, like, the full YouTube setup. Because now YouTube is so, like, super long-form content, potentially scripted, like, very studio quality. Not everybody, but, like, it's much, there's a higher expectation. So there's a higher barrier to entry. Going on TikTok makes me feel like one of the rats in the experiment where they press the happy button until they died. 100% it is. Like, that is legitimately neat. Like, I'll be sitting there like, I should stop scrolling. And I, like, physically can't, which is why I have to block it. Or like have my phone across the room. Truly wild. Truly, truly wild. TikTok. And its imitators had a very addictive part of my brain. I can mindlessly scroll on the app like mother. Exactly. And especially because, like, again, the algorithm is so good that it shows you stuff you want to see. And then since I, like, watch things that are mostly, like, educational 
on TikTok, it's like my brain's always like, you can learn something new, something new, something new. And it just like, it wants more information. Like, it's wild to me. And I'll be like, I need to read my book. And my brain's like, no. This is why I have a book. Yeah. But yeah, speaking of that, I should probably go um, so I can make some food and scroll on TikTok before it gets blocked for the night. Because <laughs> I haven't been able to be on it all day, okay? I've been, like, doing stuff. <laughs> so it's fine. Um, it's fine. So I'm going to do that. Tentatively on Sunday, I will be streaming on Twitch, game stuff, or reading sprints. So if you like live streams, follow me on Twitch because I hang out there and I talk like this the whole time. Um, so yeah, thank you for talking about YouTube stuff. Um, I'm glad that you guys had fun. Yes. Um, you made me a better reader. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, all of you have a good night. Have a good time zone wherever you are. Um, I'm glad we could do this. This was fun. I have to remember to do more YouTube streams. Sometimes I forget. There's so many streaming platforms now. It's so hard to choose where to go live on. Uh, but yeah, and I'll see you guys later. Um, is there any anywhere to get notifications about Twitch without making an account? Um, I try to post it on Twitter that I'm going live. I like try, I don't always. Um, and if you're in my Discord, I announce it, um, which is like through Patreon. Um, so I get if you're not in there. Those are the two places. There's usually a notification for um, Twitch. So. Okay. Bye. Have a good night. See you.